The dollar against the naira has been a debate for some time now, raising questions about Nigeria's potentiality in production. If the naira must appreciate, although experts have gone back and forth on recommendations that would restore the value of the naira. However, government is not oblivious of the growing concerns, as the Apex Bank, that is the central bank of Nigeria, through its monetary policies, have come up with policies that will sustain the momentum of the foreign exchange market to Nigeria's advantage. But the big catch is the Naira, which has been fluctuating in the capital market after losing its value on a fast lane. The value of the Naira is beginning to appreciate even though not the way many would expect, but there is a glimpse of hope as the Naira continues to appreciate in the parallel market. In the last few weeks, even as it maintained consistency in the official market, the regulator, that is the CBN, has promised to continue to make moves by taking appropriate actions through policies to bring about some measures of improvement and stability to the value of the nation's currency and restore its potency in the markets. Now, for the Naira to retain an appreciable value, there are certain standards that must be adhered to, to keep it afloat. Exploring the issues in the forex market against the backdrop of Naira volatility and the consequences to the Nigerian economy is critical. On Week and File tonight, our focus is foreign exchange rate benefits as Naira appreciates and our guest is Aliyu Ilyas, an economist and supply management expert. Well, our correspondents, as usual, have filed in reports on the situation all across the country. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Weekend File. I'm Ruth Aguela. First, let's begin with the news. President Bola Tinubu will depart Abuja for Lagos on Sunday, ahead of Ido Fitter. A statement by Special Advisor to the President of Media and Publicity, Ajuri Ingelali, says the President will use the solemn occasion, which marks the end of Ramadan, to observe prayers for Nigeria along with his family. Official duties continue during and after the Eid al-Fitr celebrations, he says. In other news, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has encouraged Nigerians, especially Muslim faithful, to explore the remaining days and the month of Ramadan to seek divine intervention for, an, for Almighty Allah to strengthen those making genuine efforts to positively turn around Nigeria's fortune. This was at the special iftar breaking of fast with stakeholders under the ministry he supervises. Salih Ugwanara will tell us more. Members of the top management of agencies under the Ministry of Information and National Orientation, particularly those with the same faith, are here to explore the spiritual benefits in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan and demonstrate brotherhood. At this uh, period that, uh, of our history that we are facing a lot of uh, challenges as a nation, uh, we need to come together to pray, to go back to God and, uh, you know, take our, uh, you know, religion very seriously uh, listen to the voice of the of the leaders and uh, pray for them uh, the president uh, particularly requires all of us to uh, to pray for him he means no doubt uh, very well for this country he's taking very tough decisions in the interest of our nation and all of us should uh, come together and uh, rally around him pray for him pray for our country and uh, hope that uh, the prosperity that uh, Nigerians so desire will, will be here very soon. He encouraged Nigerians, irrespective of their religion, to showcase genuine commitment through their actions and conduct to build a country that citizens deserve and desire. Uh, Ramadan is not uh, just for you to be good and then after uh, you go back to your old uh, bad habits. Uh, the Ramadan should be used to, as, as a springboard, uh, so to say. Uh, for people to, like I said, uh, re-examine their ways and uh, go closer to God. We need to pray for the unity of this country. We need to pray for the prosperity. Special prayer was held for the country and its leaders in Abuja, Salio Guanara, NTA News. Court Martial Federal Road Safety Corps, Dauda Biu, says the court will not relent in arresting trailer drivers who continually engage in conveying goods 
animals and humans until the trend is stopped across the country. It said this at the Sala Mega Motor Park Rally at the Zuba Park in the Federal Capital Territory. Oye Yemiajai reports. It's another Sala celebration and as usual, high vehicular movements are expected across the country. Not leaving any stone unturned, even being on a Saturday, the Federal Safety Corps remains unrelenting in re-echoing the message of safety on the highways, especially taking serious actions against overloading of trailers with humans, goods and animals, which has led to loss of lives in the past one month. This is in spite of the arrest of 35 trailer drivers within the period. This time around, the campaign was taken to Zuba Park of the FCT, by the Deputy Commercial Operations, Shehuzaki, who represented the Commercial Dauda Bill. It was to herald the message of safe driving during and after Sala celebration. All commanding officers have equally been directed to step up patrol operations and ensure strict enforcement of critical offenses like overloading, driving rickety vehicle, assessing smoke emissions. The commercial says the Corps will not relent in arresting and prosecuting road offenders, especially the recalcitrant trailer drivers who still disobey traffic rules, as more mobile courts have been actively established to try road traffic offenders. Oye Yemi Achai, NTA News. In the spirit of Ramadan, the National Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, through its education, social and health mission, in collaboration with the Federation of Muslim Women, that is from one, and Muslim Sisters Organization, Sakoto State Chapter, have presented assorted food items to 100 deserving households in Sakoto to enable them observe the Ramadan fast with ease. Bashir Ibrahim Nababa reports that the distribution exercise was conducted at the Zakat and Endowment Commission, Sakoto. These are among the 100 households drawn from the state capital, Sakoto, to benefit from the act of generosity. It's not only on Sokoto that this kind of charity activity is going on in this Ramadan. This is only a small fraction of what Mesh is doing. Sincere appreciation to the Supreme Council of Islam in Nigeria uh, through the Mesh organization for this uh, magnanimous gesture that they have done to Sokoto State today. As we can see, we have more than 100 uh, households that are going to benefit from this package. Sokoto is among the states in the Federation selected to benefit from the charity in the spirit of the month of Ramadan. From Sokoto, Bashir Ibrahim Nababa, NTA News. The sixth ECOWAS Parliament has constituted 14 standing committees that will run its affairs in the next four years. At today's plenary, the acting speaker, Nadra Senator Barao Jibrin, urged members of the ECOWAS Parliament to put the region first for sustainable development. ECOWAS Parliament correspondent, Mohamed Rabiu Ali, reports. Operations conducted on the basis of the draft rules of procedure of the parliament relating to committee selection, process and composition, suggestions, observations raised and thereafter adopted. In accordance with the draft rules of uh, procedures of uh, the committee on the selection hereby proposed to the Bureau of uh, Parliament, the distribution and composition of the standing committee thus is established with a view presenting it to the plenary uh, of the parliament for adoption. Article 28 is very clear. Article 40 is very clear. It is a state decision and not our political parties that we represent in our various countries. They are state affairs. And if you look at Article 40, it's very, very clear that as a parliament, we have little or nothing to read, but rather they will apply external relations and parliamentary diplomacy. I therefore put all the three draft resolution to report. Those in favor of the affirmation, please say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have it. Other issues during the session were the consideration and adoption of resolutions of the parliament. Members unanimously agreed to continue with the fifth draft as a working instrument. The acting speaker, who doubles as Nigeria's deputy president of the Senate, Barrow Jibrin 
assured of inclusivity under his watch before Togo takes over the leadership. The action taken by this parliament marks the beginning of what I foresee to be a united parliament that speaks the one voice in the interest of our community. The parliament has adjourned till Sinidai in Abuja, Muhammad Raimi Ali, NTN News. The National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, the Central Bank of Nigeria, and the Nigeria Interbank Settlement System have launched an innovative identity solution with payment functionality for all types of social and financial services to be powered by Africo, a national domestic card scheme. The National ID Card is backed by the NIMSI Act No. 23 of 2007 to enroll and issue a general multi-purpose card to Nigerians and legal residents. A statement by Kayode Adegoke, head of corporate communications NIMSI, indicates that the card will enable card holders prove their identity, access government and private social services, and facilitate financial inclusion for disenfranchised Nigerians, particularly when they link their bank accounts to their name numbers. Let's talk security. The military is advocating upscaled synergy between the military, all the security agencies, government, non-government bodies to streamline efforts in countering threats to national security. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Taurit Lagbaja, stated this in a message at the Army War College Nigeria Interagency Seminar for participants of Course 8 2024. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the seminar is focusing on consolidating existing relationship towards effective interagency collaboration in addressing multi-dimensional security threats in the country. Cooperation and coordination between relevant government actors required. Additionally, dialogue and cooperation between government and non-governmental actors vital in preventing and countering terrorism and other forms of violence. It is essential to always employ all the elements of national power to stem the tide. However, the projection of the elements of national power globally requires a holistic approach that involves security agencies as well as the ministries, departments and agencies to cooperate and collaborate towards attainment of national objectives. Agencies involved will need to make concerted effort to forge strong partnerships and seek coordinated solutions that leverage expertise and capabilities across fields. Army chiefs at the event note that the volatile and ambiguous security environment requires operational leadership that understands the changing dynamics. A board of inquiry we hear has been set up by the defense headquarters and the Delta state government. Now, their terms of reference is to, amongst other things, work towards restoring normalcy in Ukwama Ugeli, south of Delta state, and its affected communities following the killings of some soldiers. Tessie Koka reports that the chairman of the board, Air Vice Marshal David Ajayi, and other members were in worry to pay a cutsy visit on the governor. The Board of Enquiry and its members are in Delta State to seek the support of the governor to enable them to carry out a proper investigation of what led to the unfortunate incident that occurred at Okwama. We are here with, to, on a fact-finding mission, not to apportion blame, not to say you are guilty or you should be punished or whatever, but to find out the fact about what has happened. It has happened, uh, it shouldn't have happened, and we pray that it will never happen again. Because if we are to come up with uh, reports that will help the defense equator take decision to forestall future occurrence and also to enhance the relationship between the military security agencies and the immediate community that they are sworn and oath to, come, uh, to, to protect. Setting up this board of inquiry is a very good one. I want to assure you that whatever information you want, we will give to you. We we'll also come with our position paper to submit to you before you will leave. That will also guide you. If the collaboration by the Delta State Government and the military to restore peace in the area is anything to go by, 
then economic activities will thrive again in Okwoma and its neighboring communities. Tessie Koka, NTA News. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission says it has directed all electricity distribution companies to ensure that only the newly approved Band A feeders listed in their April 2024 supplementary orders are maintained as Band A for the purpose of vending to prepaid customers and billing for post-paid customers on their networks. In a statement, the Commission also mandates them to immediately post on their websites the schedule of approved Band A feeders affected by the new tariff. They are also to set up a portal to allow customers to check their current bands by entering their meter or account numbers. And customers wrongly billed under the new tariff should be refunded through energy tokens not later than Thursday, 11th April 2024. And the distribution companies should file evidence of compliance by 12th April 2024. Earlier today, Lagos State stood still for its chief executive governor, Mabajide Sanwolu, as he gave out his daughter, Mudukbe Oreoluwa, <laughs> in a marriage to her heartthrob, Oladele Johnson, at a well-attended ceremony in the state. State House correspondent Adeni Taiwo reports that Nigeria's first lady, Oluremi Tinubu, was in attendance. A long awaited moment arrives, and the joy of being a parent is taken to a new level for Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu as he walks his daughter, Modukpere Oluwa, down the aisle at the Cathedral Church of Christ, Marina Lagos, into the waiting hands of her heart robe, Oladele Johnson. For better or worse, richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish. Exchange of marital vows and other formalities done with, two indeed became one in line with the scriptures and a new family was born. In a short sermon, very Reverend Adebola Ojofa Intimi admonished the new couple to demonstrate absolute commitment to their marital vows. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Nigeria's first lady, Olure Mitsunumbu, led a roll call of dignitaries, including state governors, to witness the ceremony. Marriage is very sacred. We do everything to make sure it succeeds. The, the husband has been dancing. I said, you know, I'm a witness today. You have to dance like this forever. God will give you both divine health, joy, peace, and happiness. A short Thanksgiving service followed to usher the new couple into their new life. In Lagos, Adeni Itaiwo, NTN News. All right, we'll take a break now. Remember when we come back, we told you we'll be having a conversation on foreign exchange rates benefits. Thank you for being there. And just before we begin our conversation, let's take some reports. The central bank's monetary policy reforms is gradually yielding positive outcomes as the Nigerian economy witnessed an injection of $1.5 billion. Musa Abubakar reports that recent development shows that besides stabilizing the forex market, the reform is said to also boost investor confidence. From a volatile start to finding stability, the federal government monetary reforms through Olaya Mikadoso and his team at the CBN are on the right course. We've had um, relative shortages in foreign exchange over the recent past. We are now seeing more activity in the foreign exchange market, which in turn is reducing the exchange rate and is also reducing costs. What determines the price of the dollar is that the naira is how much naira is available to chase the dollar. So that action of the CBN, you know, of pushing up the cash reserve, we should 45% clearly um, reduce the amount of naira. 
Trading at between 1,250 naira to 1,300 naira to a dollar in the official and parallel market reflects the desired impact. The central bank clearing of Verify FX backlog, amongst other interventions, is having after a period of uncertainty. The valid transactions, as far as the central bank has been, the central bank of Nigeria is concerned, have been taken care of. We've done what we can to make the market as open and transparent and liquid as possible. These monetary reforms, Olai Mikado so said, signal a commitment to market transparency and stability, crucial for attracting foreign investment and bolstering economic growth. What we are beginning to see now is the fact that investments is flowing in. Right now, foreign portfolio investments started with $1 billion. If we can sustain that rate for February, we should be able to get $12 billion worth of foreign uh, portfolio investments. The CBM believes reduction of bureau de change operators and their reintroduction into the market aims to enhance liquidity and provide essential services to retail customers. They look into the future at some point in time. We we'll expect to have a situation where um, interventions from the central bank into the market will be minimal to non-existent. But where we see the need to have liquidity pumped in, to ensure liquidity in the market and that the market is boisterous and, and, and um, stakeholders can come in and go out, we will do so. The Naira has since rebounded from unfamiliar territory after it was floated in a strategic move to allow the currency to find its true value in the market. With an inflow of $1.5 billion into the country and a stable forex market, economic watchers are starting to believe that it can only get better. In Abuja, I am Musa Abubakar, NT News. Well, the value of the Naira has appreciated by 21.4% since March 2024, from 1.591 Naira to 1.255 Naira based on what we're seeing per dollar in the official window. Now, this positive outcome, industry watchers say, should be sustained. As metrics show the nation's currency is one of the best performing on the continent in recent times. Amaka O to tell us. The depreciation of the Naira, which fell to an all-time low, exchanging for 1,500 Naira to a dollar in the official window in the month of February, which according to the Financial Market Infrastructure Group, FMDQ, made Nigerians grapple with persistent increase in the general price levels and had the inflation rate at 31.70% in February. The appreciation of the Naira, owing to the interventions from the Apex Bank, has sent positive signals, thereby boosting investors' confidence. The monetary policies that they have put in place is yielding fruits. The increase in the cash reserve uh, ratio, um, the, the, the increase in the monetary policy rate, NPR, by 400 basis points, uh, which in itself are contractionary in nature to withdraw um, money from the economy and make, literally make the Naira scarce. Industry players say the positive growth is yet to reflect on the buying decisions made at a high rate. The made emphasis on sustaining the momentum. Once you remove the speculative components uh, of the of the demand for forex, uh, what will now be left is the capacity to supply the foreign exchange, and that is dependent on our uh, capacity to earn foreign exchange, which is largely dependent on what happens in our oil and gas sector. So, if we're able to export more. Is able to reduce all this uh, insecurity uh, around our oil producing area. Secondly, that um, we find a way to revive productive activity, particularly in the manufacturing sector, because when you also have more activity in the manufacturing sector, you create more employment. You also create a lot of um, consumer demand, which also helps with the profitability of the local businesses. Experts also say that they expect Bureau the change operators to maintain transparency in foreign exchange transactions and support the economic recovery efforts of the President Bola Ahmed Tunibu led administration in Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. Well, Tari News as the Naira continue to appreciate, but not yet Uhuru. 
some would say. Um, let's start the conversation on foreign exchange rate benefits as NERA appreciate. We have in the studio uh, Mr. Aliu Elias. He's an economist and supply management expert. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Elias. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm sure you are concerned about the way the NERA is appreciating to the dollar. But I'd like to pick a quote from the CBN governor where he said, the Apex Bank has done everything it can to be open, transparent, and liquid, um, you know, for the interventions we're seeing. But would you say that's the trickling effect we're seeing on the NERA? Right. Uh, I think uh, we need to commend the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, especially the leadership for a very uh, uh, good uh, effort to make sure uh, uh, NERA got uh, it, uh, its place. You will recall that about nine uh, policy direction has been uh, 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 activated to make sure that at least this uh, NERA uh, really gets appreciated. And if you look at eight weeks uh, consecutively, we have seen those positive uh, uh, results. And what are those uh, uh, positive uh, results? First and foremost is to uh, look at uh, having a good external reserve, paying backlog that, uh, that has been owned by, owned by the past uh, government and other uh, activities around it. You could also see what happened uh, in terms of finance because sometimes speculation also have its way uh, in affecting the, the forex itself. I think uh, overall we we'll give it to them uh, for good effort consecutively and we think sustainability of it is just the main key because if you are unable to sustain it, it might just be a uh, flash in the pan, which I think they will not joke uh, with that opportunity and they will continue that trajectory to make sure uh, NERA actually have it, please. And you just picked the word I was going to come up with um, following what you've just said, sustainability. Um, from Thursday, we saw 1.250, then we saw 1.245, that's the NERA. And today, when I looked up the numbers, 1.247, thereabout. Um, sustainability, of course, like you mentioned, is key. What are those other interventions? The Apex Bank will do its part. What should we do as a nation to keep the NERA afloat? Right. I think uh, we must uh, actually work, work on our uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy so that there will not be contradiction. You know, if monetary, uh, monetary policy is putting up some uh, effort to make sure things actually work out, it must also work uh, in tandem with the uh, fiscal uh, policy to an extent. Because if monetary policy is making sure things are going well and it's being eroded by uh, uh, fiscal policy, it will bring up a challenge to the uh, Nigeria economy. So I think as it is now, we must actually make sure that the trajectory is being sustained through the monetary policy, through the uh, fiscal policy, and also our trade policy, because that is the area we are not actually uh, doing well uh, in that area, because trade policy also affects this uh, uh, foreign uh, uh, forex, because if you look at even the remittance, if you look at the export remittance uh, for about uh, three weeks now, you see it's yielding positive uh, results. So all this must come together to really uh, support this uh, effort that CBN is putting in place. Now, despite this growth, where I'm sure the, those in authority are not oblivious of the challenges, talking about the gaps, um, you're concerned, I'm sure you're concerned, rather, about the inflation rate. We're seeing for February 31.7% thereabout, and compared to January 29.9%. Um, if you want to look at ways, you know, some of these interventions can have rippling effect, you know, for the NERA to appreciate, closing those gaps, what are the areas? Now, we've seen experts from the reports we've seen um, talked about infrastructure, industrialization, and the rest of it. What would be your recommendation? Right. Uh, if you look at the approach that CBN is applying, it's much more of a hawkish uh, approach whereby they are sacrificing economic growth for uh, maybe uh, uh, stability, for, I mean, stability, and also making sure that inflation does not go beyond the uh, weight. So I, I think the major concern should be uh, we should also look at our NPR because uh, from uh, four, uh, 200 basis point to 400 basis point, we must also look at that to make sure that the uh, manufacturing sector, the small businesses are also not affected while we are trying to also have a, a stability. So these are the things that we must look at because if you have a strong manufacturing sector, a, small, a strong MSME, you recall that also MSME uh, employ over 85% of Nigerians and also it's also uh, uh, do more than 50% to the gross domestic product of the country. That simply means that we must also look at our NPR. Is either we maintain status quo going forward or we just make sure that we balance it so as not to bring a negative effect in the long run. 
And if we want to talk going forward, importation is a, um, what will I call it now, keeps rearing its head um, when we're supposed to be thinking of export. Although there are efforts, you know, in place, but how do we boost this revenues by promoting more exports for the country? Right. Most of the effort that CBN is putting in place, they are much more of a short and medium uh, term. To have a long term uh, uh, support, that's where we must also look at uh, our exports very, very well. Because if you can export, it also gives you uh, that opportunity to have a, a remittance that will, also, that will compete and give NERA the right uh, place to be. So I think we must look at that. And structurally also, we must also look at our uh, uh, security. It's also what we need to uh, watch very well. Because if you look at our major uh, problem and most of our inflation there, uh, is moving toward food uh, cost uh, inflation. And to really sustain, uh, to really tame that, that simply means that we must work on our, our security so as at least to have local production that will engender uh, development and sustainability in the long run. And those who are doing the local production will tell you of their challenges, you know, the challenges they face on a daily basis, especially when it comes to um, cost of production. Um, wh when we're talking policies and, you know, the implementation of these policies, what are the great areas that should be addressed to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive? Right. Uh, first thing that uh, this country must make sure that we fix is energy security. Energy security is very, very uh, important to development at any, any level. You, you will see that the cost of electricity, the cost of uh, uh, PMS, all the diesel, all these things come together to affect the manufacturing sector. And like I said, with what is happening now, most uh, small business may be out of business if there is no adequate energy security and also cost of uh, this energy. I think that area is very, very critical. We must find a way to balance it. Perhaps if uh, the Dangote uh, refinery, the Portacol refinery are there, maybe by so doing we'll have a balance of it. You also recall that a major foreign exchange is uh, uh, also uh, oil, oil. And this oil, we are suffering oil tests. Uh, uh, among all other prob problems in that area. So I think we should also make sure that we increase our, our, our export and our refinery uh, get to work. I think this will bring a, a better opportunity to develop more for Nigeria. All right, Mr. Elias, we'll pick up with this conversation. We have to take a break. Please don't go anywhere. One more report, then we'll pick up with our conversation. As Nigeria's much-anticipated economic reform begins to manifest following the central bank's new policy on foreign exchange, which sees Nara bouncing back. Stakeholders and Kanu are optimistic that if efforts are sustained and leakages blocked, such an initiative will help the economy to rebound. A major commercial hub in Nigeria the evaluation of Naira has serious implication on commercial activities as both the industries and businesses have links with the exchange rates from the parallel market which add to inflation and erosion of people's purchasing power. Stakeholders believe that addressing infrastructural gap and blockage of leakages and corruption can help boost Naira and that can prepare fertile ground for massive production and exportation. If the control is maintained and the CBN stands firm and makes sure that it applies all money laundering rules and it also enforces all the controls through any bank that fails to apply the PND on such accounts, the order can be given, a circular can be given, and then they go on. It doesn't matter if the, uh, some people could suffer certain pains. For to ensure that uh, the establishment of infrastructure, especially rail, you know, rail will stabilize the movement of economics in the country. The good news is that the Naira is beginning to regain its strength as a result of the new policies put in place by the Central Bank of Nigeria. As such, stakeholders are optimistic that, if sustained, would help reform the state's alien industries. They also identified diversification and local production as key to sustaining the value of Naira. All right, we'll continue with our conversation. Mr. Aliyu Elias is still in the studio. Uh, Mr. Elias, you just saw that report. Um, the commercial market, of course, wants the narrow stabilized. And earlier, you talked about the intervention, some of the reforms, um, unification of the 
exchange rate is one of that reform which we're yet to see you know having that balance now another aspect is the liberalization of the forest market and you mentioned the backlog payment of the backlog but one aspect that is very critical is investments which um you know experts have come out to say this investments opportunities you know when it's been um, harnessed properly for the country it could open new frontiers you know opportunities to stabilize the nara do you share such perspective right uh, uh willing uh, buyer and willing uh, seller it's a good option but it also have its own conditionalities because you know you must have what you can actually use to compete in that market to actually have that uh, opportunity to really uh, balance however if you look at most of cbn intervention especially by reducing the burrito they change because you know we have uh, over five thousand of them now it has reduced to uh, one thousand or there but and also there's intervention by giving them uh, actually uh, foreign uh, currencies to really uh, trade. I think these are the control that we are lacking before that exposes us to all the challenges we are seeing uh, in the market. So I think if we can sustain most of this uh, policy, this will give us a better uh, uh, forex, uh, uh, stronger, stronger Naira. And you know, once we have an appreciable uh, Naira, it simply have a multiplier effect even to the uh, federal government to consumers and to manufacturing uh, sector and that's why most of us are, are celebrating what they have done uh, so far and want them to continue in their trajectory and the Bureau of assurance you mentioned um, of course we saw the revised um, guidelines for them as part of the ongoing reforms by the CBN um, the aspect is one thing to you know provide those revised guidelines and other things to ensure effective compliance and monitoring what would you say it is instructive that uh, if you go outside Nigeria you recall that there is no way you go to bury the chain to change your money they will ask for international passport they will ask uh, and, and that's actually give them the to know more about you why you're actually doing that so i think we just have to control that aspect because if we don't control it it gives us a, a negative externalities that we may not be able to to contain so there is no way in the world that really the change are left to actually uh, operate on there without continuous monitoring and this monitoring must be very very strong at that because continuous monitoring will, will let us know how much is actually with them how much are they actually giving and that's we are supposed to get Arnera, it's, uh, it's placed in the, in the market. I think it's very key. We continue to monitor our bullion exchange. And also, in addition to that also, our bank also needs to be monitored very well because, you know, sometimes we always look at the bullion exchange. Even the bank itself needs to be well monitored when it comes to our forex and forex market. That's the job of the Apex Bank. That's its job to regulate all this. Um, but the aspect we're seeing now when the Naira is appreciating for the past two weeks. But one aspect, you know, citizens are concerned about is the fact that food prices are not going down, even though the Naira is appreciating, which was the, um, you know, reasons for the high game prices. Now, this is where food security becomes sacrosanct. Um, what would you recommend in the area of meeting the demand as against the supply? Right. I think uh, it's important we know that uh, if at all we are having appreciable uh, uh, value for Nera, now it's, we also need to sustain it before it will now reflect in the, in, in the market because, you know, it is when this the, the thing, uh, maybe we sustain it for one month, two months, you start seeing the, the results uh, in, the, in, the, in the market. And like you mentioned about food uh, our security also. I think our major issue in terms of food security is much more food supply chain. You recall President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu declared emergency on food uh, security. We need to also see that uh, actually working because if that work, it will have help us to really attain the challenge of uh, food uh, in the market. So because if you have uh, uh, food in Bauchi and there's need for you to take it uh, down to Lagos, I can tell you that the cost of transporting that food is much more than even the cost of buying the food itself. So the supply chain is very, very key because even a 40 feet container from Lagos to Akano, you know how much it costs. And the seller is going to transfer the cost of the transportation and all other costs to the uh, consumer. And that's where the consumer now bear the, uh, the brunt of it. So that's the emergency of food security need to be followed uh, through and making sure that we have all around farming that can actually cater for our need in terms of food in Nigeria. And earlier, one of the um, um, experts in the reports, you know, mentioned the infrastructural aspects. This concern you just raised, transporting this food, you know, from one place to another. Um, 
Of course, the food security aspect has been declared a state of emergency, which is part of the eighth priority for this administration. But there are bottlenecks, you know, that needs to be addressed. What kind of support, you know, should local farmers be given? Right. Common feeder road it becomes a problem for our local market and also accessibility to the, to the market because it's one thing to have adapt produce in the, in the farm. Another thing is to get it to the, to the uh, market. Another problem we are also facing is the security, insecurity in the, uh, in the farm. Most people, we still have some p places where we actually uh, get to see this uh, produce, but now they mm. cannot assess that. Uh, place. So we need a stronger security that will give people confidence that they can actually go to the farm and, uh, buy, um, and get and assess their farm to also bring about uh, the, the produce. And I think government needs to do more to increase people's confidence to go to the uh, farm to produce. And uh, the president must also walk through that emergency declared on food security on a different infrastructure that is needed to really engender that. One is transportation, one is uh, year-round irrigation. All this will come together to give us the food uh, security that we're all in for. All right, and just before I let you go, Mr. Elias, Cherry news. Nigerians, you know, are appreciating the Nera like the Nera is appreciating. But going forward, really, you've talked about a lot of um, salient issues that need to be addressed. Um, but if we have to sustain this momentum, um, there are aspects that we should not just be business as usual or just mere talk, but action. Your final thoughts. Right. I think if you look at our major earnings is from the oil. So I think we must make sure that we up our game there and also tame the uh, oil thefts that has been affecting us. And we must also do more in security. More security will give us more uh, production in the, in the farm and it will also show in our economy. I think that's very, very key. And for CBN, I think they should uh, do more in terms of that. And you should also look at the NPR very well because, you know, Manufacturer, manufacturing sector also need to uh, continue to try because when they try, that is when we have employment. When there's employment, that's where we have a, 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 a favorable uh, GDP. So we need to also look at that uh, uh, NPR. Is that we tarry on it or we maintain status quo? And if I will quote the CBN governor, he said it's for the future, he's looking at a time, you know, where there will be minimal or non-existence intervention by the Apex Bank. So we sustain the appreciation of the Naira. Thank you very much, Mr. Aliu Elias. He's an economist and supply management expert. Thank you for your contributions on Weekend File. We do appreciate. Thank you for having me. All right. Let's take a break. We're back in a moment.